For this tutorial, I prepared a small blog website. It's very simple, straightforward, generic as you can see in the title. The text is randomly generated, so don't try to make any sense of it. And the only real feature that we care about on this website is dark mode. So you can see it, not gonna explain what it is, because you already know that. And the way it's currently implemented in the application is we have this root component called app. We declare the state is dark mode enabled state here, which is false by default. Then we have the toggle dark mode function, which simply changed dark mode to not what dark mode is currently. And we then pass this is dark mode enabled state to all of children component. Even though for such a small app, it's not really a problem. Imagine that if it starts growing and expanding, it's going to be a problem because we're going to have to pass this dark mode to every single component every time we want to add something new. For example, if I wanted to make this buttons clickable or if I wanted to add a comment section here, but this would be definitely something problematic. This problem can be solved using global state. A global state is just a shared state that any component in the app can access. They can read to it, they can write it. Well, if you heard about Redux, that's basically what global state is. So in this video, we're going to pass that dark mode state inside of recoil global state. Before we can do this, we have to first install the recoil itself. You can do this by writing npm install recoil or just npm i recoil. And the last thing that we need to do is to open your index.js file and just wrap our main component inside of recoil root. So this is pretty much it. You can now start using recoil. Now I'm going to create a new file called global state JS, where we are going to store our global state variables. So we're going to create a const dark mode state equals Adam. We import that from recoil. It's going to have a key of dark mode state and a default value of false. So as you can see, we create an atom. It's actually very simple and you can think of it as just one piece of shared state. The key has to be unique, so I just call it the name of the variable to make it more simple. And the default value for us is going to be false. So now I'm going to remove these two values and also remove all occurrences of is dark mode enabled inside of the app. Now that we are done, let's just refresh the page. Obviously it won't compile because the dark mode variable is now not defined. So how do we use the recoil state inside of a component? The API is very similar to react hooks cons is dark mode enabled and set is dark mode enabled. And now instead of just using use state, we're going to have use recoil state. And inside of this as an argument, we pass the atom that we have created. So in our case, it's dark mode state. So now we have both the variable and the value to set it. But actually, as we can see in the app component, we don't need to set the value. We only need to use this value. And recoil team has got us covered with another hook, which is use recoil value. Not going to use this anymore. This component now has access to is dark mode enabled from our global state. So let's go through all of the components and add the dark mode there. Let's start with header, the component that is responsible for enabling or disabling the dark mode. So for this case is dark mode enabled and set is dark mode enabled. And we're going to use recoil state. So we're going to import that same atom dark mode state. As you can see, we have toggle dark mode function. So we have to create this one here as well. So const toggle dark mode function, which set is dark mode enabled as not is dark mode enabled. So very simple, straightforward. The app still won't compile just yet, but it's fine. So the next component is main content. And as you can see, it doesn't use dark mode in any way. So we're going to skip it. Now the breadcrumbs, we, we're not going to change it anywhere. So we're just going to use the value. So is dark mode enabled, use recoil value, dark mode state. We need the same thing for article list and article. So now that we are finished, the app should compile. And now let's check how the dark mode works. As you can see, it works exactly the same as it used to be. However, there is still one thing that I don't quite like. And if we look to the header, we can see that the dark mode and the toggle dark mode function we declared here. And it is completely fine since we only plan to use dark mode here once in the header and nowhere else. But imagine if you had to use this state somewhere else in the app as well. Does this mean that we have to declare this toggle dark mode function every time we want to use it? It's not really convenient if you ask me. However, we can fix that with recoil as well. 
In order to do that, we will have to use something called selector. It also comes in the recoil package and I will just quickly show you how to use it. And we have to initialize a selector. So selectors are very similar to atoms. They also have a, a unique key to them. So dark mode toggle. And instead of having a default value, they allow us to override the get and set functions for the atom. In this case, we need to override the set method. So set. So what do we want to do in this case? We want to take the current value of dark mode state and then set it to the opposite. Luckily, set method comes with an argument inside of an object called get. We can use this function that we got here to get any value from any atom in the app. So const current value is equal to get dark mode state. And all we need to do now is to set the value for this dark mode state. We can do that luckily in the set function since along with get, we also get a set function that we can use. So what we want to do is to set dark mode state and pass a new value to it which is going to be not current state, so the opposite of what we currently have. So let's save it and let's implement this inside of our header. So along with dark mode state, let's import toggle dark mode state. Selectors are no different from atoms in terms of integration to React components. So all we need to do is to just write const toggle dark mode. And now we are going to use another recoil hook called use set recoil state and we're going to pass toggle dark mode state in here as you can imagine if use recoil state returns both get and set function use recoil value only returns the actual value use set recoil state returns the function to manipulate the state since we already got the value from is dark mode enabled we don't really need to get it another time let's now remove this toggle dark mode function that we made ourselves and we can also change this to use recoil value. And now the app should work exactly the same as it used to. So let's check. We can see that nothing has changed, but now we have this toggle logic and encapsulated in a selector. For now, we only use recoil to store synchronous data. Let's see how asynchronous recoil works. Here is the article list component. As you can see, it's very simple. We have articles, set articles, use effect. If you don't know what it is, it's just component did mount if you're used to class components more. So it only runs once when the component mounts for the first time. And all we do here is we fetch articles using the article service that I'm going to show you in a second. And then we set this as a result. So let's open the article service. We have some hard-coded articles over here and a get all function. We simulate the backend call by resolving the promise after 500 seconds over here. And if we take a look at the actual block, we can see that whenever I refresh the page, the articles don't appear instantly. So it takes some time to appear. And this is exactly what this timeout does. And even though we don't have to put this data into global state because we only use it here in this article list component, for the sake of the tutorial, I'm just going to pass this to global state to see how recoil works with asynchronous data. There are plenty of ways to handle asynchronous data in recoil. And we're going to start with the very first pretty obvious one. We're going to create a brand new atom with a key of article state and a default value of an empty array. When we go back to the, our article list component, we can see that pretty much all we need to do is to use recoil state instead of regular state and pass this atom over here, article state. So this should work exactly the same and it does. If you're comfortable with this scenario, it's absolutely fine, but I just wanna let you know that recoil also offers another thing. And for this, I'm going to create a new selector, which we're gonna call article query. So it's a selector. And now we want to modify the get method. So the idea is to make this process inside of the this use effect automatic. Whenever we just use the recoil state over here, it's going to automatically fetch all the articles and save them to our atom. So in order to do this, we have to first fetch all of the articles. So we're going to use the same article service and get all method. Get all actually returns a promise, so we have to make this an asynchronous function and await for the result. And now we're just going to return the articles. Now let's try using this inside of our code. So now we don't need this and we don't need that. So let's make const articles use recoil value since we only need the actual value. We don't need the set function and we're going to pass the articles query selector. So now let's see what we have. And if you try to do this like this, you will get an error. So what does it mean and why does it actually happen? The reason why this is happening is because articles at the moment when we have this in variable is 
promise. It's still pending, it's not resolved, or at least it might not be resolved yet. And this is why React is giving us this warning. It says that we should handle this somehow. And they recommend using suspense component and add it higher in the tree to provide a fallback. How can we do this? The parent component of article list is main component. Yeah, we can see that article list is here. So let's add a suspense component. It's a part of React package, so we can do react.suspense. Now we have to pass the fallback prop and let's just say diff loading and three dots. Let's close the component. If you refresh the page now, it will show the loading over here, as you can see, and load the articles as expected. The problem with React Suspense, however, is that we have to wrap the whole component inside of React Suspense. So as you can see, inside of this article list component, we also have a diff with a class name of article list. This diff is not going to be displayed before the promise is resolved. And this might actually be a little bit problematic in some cases. However, there is another solution to this problem called use recoil value loadable. We can now remove the React Suspense since you know how it works. And let's move to the loadables. So we still have an error, but a different one. So this is, don't really worry about this error message because it comes from the loadable. A loadable is a promise-like object that holds the current state of the promise inside of it. So it can have three states. Loading has value and has error, just like promise with its pending, resolved and rejected. Let's create a function over here, render articles and it is going to have a switch articles. And now the first case is when everything went okay. So it has value. In case it has value, all we want to do is to return block over here. However, since articles are not actually the array, we can access the content using contents. So now this is the actual array that contains all of our desired articles. So you want to map over it. And for each article in the list, we're just going to return the article over here. Now there is another case where it's either loading or has error or the default value. So we're just going to say that for default loading and for case has error. And we're just going to return loading with three dots. And now we just have to render this function over here. We should see the same exact result now. Yes, it's still loading. It still shows the articles. And the last case we have to cover is what if you want to get something by ID, for example. So you want to get a specific article in the list instead of the list of all. How are you supposed to do that with recoil since none of our atoms and selectors support any custom parameters? Luckily, recoil offers that feature article by ID query, we have to declare selector family. It's very similar. We still have to have a key. It also has a get method, but we can now have a function that returns another function. And at this point, we can put our logic. Since this function, this inner function is really the same as this one, for example, the arguments for it is only get. So the arguments are predefined and we cannot pass any of our custom ones. However, for this outer function over here, we can actually specify that we want ID to be passed to it. So what do we need to do now is to just find an article that we want by ID that we have in our arguments. Article service, we have a function to get something by ID. So this function is the same as get all. It's also a promise and it just finds an article at the list with the ID that we specified. And now we have to just return this article. Let's open article list component. And now in order to use this, we just have to use article by ID query and pass the argument directly here. So since we have three articles with ID from one to three, let's query the latest one with ID of three. This is actually an article now, a single article. Article is no longer an array, so we can't use the map method now. Let's make it like that. Article data is equal to article contents. Return the article like that instead of article, we're going to pass article data. So let's try refreshing the page. And yes, this is the latest post that we had, the one with the most dislikes, and we can only see one. So this should be pretty much enough for you to start developing using recoil. 
And even though there are other features in Recoil, such as other helpers like Atom Family, wait for all, wait for any, wait for none, you're probably not going to use them as much, so I wouldn't worry about it. And if you want to learn, you can always go to the Recoil documentation and just learn them yourself. And since this sums it up for Recoil, let's make a final verdict for this global state management library. I think that Recoil is an amazing proof of concept to show global state management doesn't have to be hard. And if we go over pros and cons, I would say that what I like about Recoil is its simplicity. The setup literally takes one minute. You don't have to create store, you don't have to create a reducer for it, you don't have to have a whole lot of different actions, and you don't have to wait some time and write boilerplate to integrate that into your React code. The other thing is that this is definitely designed for React and Recoils feels like it belongs to React, that it's not even a library, but rather a feature that is in the React itself. And the last one is efficiency. Even though we didn't talk about this in this tutorial, Recoil only re-renders the components that use values from its shared state. So in our case, the main content component that doesn't use Recoil won't get re-rendered just because the data is changed. Compared to Redux, for example, that re-renders the whole DOM tree whenever any value is changed. So this is fantastic for applications that have very frequent global state changes to make sure that they can keep their performance even though they use the global state. And now for very definite cons, unfortunately, Recall only works with functional components. So if your project is currently using class components, there is no way for you to use Recoil. Hopefully this is going to be changed in the future, but at the moment of recording this video, it's not possible. And the second one is asynchronous operations. I don't know about you, but whenever I use both React Suspense and Switch Case statements, it feels very gimmicky, it feels unfinished, and it feels like a workaround rather than a solution. So I really hope that the Recall team can come up with something that is more convenient and more user-friendly to use in the future. This is it for this tutorial. If you liked it, press the thumbs up. If you want to see more content like that, press the subscribe button. If you want to add something or just share your opinion about Recall, feel free to leave a comment and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.